So yeah, my name is Drew Bannon. I'm one of the co-founders at, at DBT Labs. Um, you can find me on Twitter uh, at, at Drew Bannon. And just one point of uh, clarification, I think the agenda says that I'm uh, the CPO here. I'm actually the former CPO here, uh, which is great because as CPO, I could never join uh, events like this and give talks about things like semantic layers and feature source. So really excited to be here um, and looking forward to the chat after in, in Slack. Um, let's start with the question. What's a feature store? Seriously, what's a, what's a feature store? Please help me. I don't know. Um, I'm mostly kidding. I did do my research. I, I read up on feature stores ahead of time. But the thing I want to come clean about really at the front is uh, machine learning engineering is not my background. It's not my domain. Um, I come from the sort of data analytics, data warehousing, BI reporting kind of domain. And the thing I want to kind of dig into today is the, the rise of the feature store and the rise of sort of a similar, uh, I think, um, technological innovation kind of in the, in the BI and analytics realm that we call a semantic layer. So semantic layers are really like in right now. People in the BI and analytics sphere are talking about them. And the big ideas at play are that you want to define your data sets and metrics. You want to map out how they can relate to each other. And then you want to translate like high level semantic queries into SQL for execution. Um, so some examples of metrics that you might want to um, uh, define once and use everywhere is revenue by country or average revenue per customer. These metrics should be like very precisely defined that they will probably change infrequently, though they do change sometimes as we'll see. Uh, and so managing these metrics is kind of deserving of um, sort of th these new technology innovations. So like, why is this important? Like, why is it hard to calculate revenue? Uh, this is sort of the canonical example. You might think revenue is easy to calculate. You just sum up, you know, order totals in your orders table and you get revenue. But in practice, you need to make sure to exclude orders that are returned. You need to make sure that you uh, subtract out tax paid on the order because that's revenue for the IRS, not revenue for, for your company. And then invariably you get quirks like this where you know up until today you recorded um, orders, uh, order totals in, in pennies and cents, but now it's dollar values or vice versa, whatever it is. And so you sometimes see quirks like this where the source data isn't actually representative of kind of the reality on the ground. You need to apply like business logic to, to sort of convert that data into information. So I don't wanna like belabor DBT here, but just to show you what this looks like to make it concrete, Basically, when you write a query, you could you could write out this thing, or you could say select star from from this metric called revenue by day, and, and DBT could compile a much bigger SQL query for you. So, in terms of like visualizing this thing, I think about it kind of like an iceberg. Um, this pink thing, like this, is a real view of our DAG at, at DBT Labs and, and how we track our objectives and key results. So, this pink thing is a metric. It's weekly active projects for us, which, which is a metric we care a lot about. And that's like the actual aggregation. You know, it's like the sum of users that had activity in the previous week, whatever it is. Um, but that actually misses a lot of the logic that feeds into calculating this metric correctly. So all these blue nodes here in this DAG are sort of logic that we apply to source data to um, like join data sets together from different data sources, like aggregations, filtering, whatever it might be. And so it's this whole chain of all the logic applied to source data plus the actual metric definition that kind of composes the final metric. So like, I'm sort of wondering if this sounds familiar to you, right? Like I'm talking about business metrics and BI and reporting, but from reading about feature stores, it seems like kind of a similar concept, right? Like there's only one way to define revenue. And in a similar way, it's like, there's only one way to define if someone is active or not. Um, that might change over time as your product evolves or you know, new, new product capabilities roll out. Um, but if you have many people on many different teams that are all kind of accessing the same like features or metrics, you want to make sure that these things are consistent, that work isn't being repeated, because if you're repeating work or like copying and pasting code, things like that, then inconsistencies can arise and you can get sort of invalid, incorrect data. So the theme here that I think links together the semantic layer concept in BI and analytics with like feature stores and, and sort of ML engineering is this idea of standardization, right? Like whether you're creating inputs for ML training and serving or outputs for analytics and data science, um, you wanna make sure that when you invest the energy to define these constructs, features, metrics, whatever they are, that you're kind of doing that once, that you're doing it correctly, and that you have a good way of evolving this logic over time as sort of requirements and the product experience invariably changes. So 
I would argue that sort of features in ML are akin to sort of what we call dimensions or maybe metrics in, in the BI world. Um, this is sometimes true. I don't think it's always true for reasons that I've read about recently, but I'm kind of curious to hear everyone's take on. So this is kind of my, my view of how to bridge these two worlds. And this is like more of a mental model than an architecture diagram. I'm not advocating for any technology in particular, but it's sort of how I think about it, right? Um, the fact that the data warehouse is front and center here, or you know, it could be a data lake house, of course, uh, is sort of a signal that, that this is very much my background. But the idea is you're gonna have all these sort of transformations in business logic to apply to your data to sort of make sense of it. Um, from that point, you have this like shared logic, and then you can use that to make dashboards and reports that like business users kind of consume and understand. You could also take these like bits of logic and use them to power like features that you use for machine learning. And the really cool thing about sort of having a shared parent between these two use cases is that you get consistency and you get reuse. And so investments that your BI or analytics team has made to model revenue or product usage activity, like they could be leveraged for feature engineering and machine learning and kind of vice versa. Um, so that's kind of what you know, DBT is all about at its core is helping get data engineers and data analysts collaborating with shared tools. And I, I just can't help but wonder if there's an opportunity for us to do this with machine learning engineering and BI, and if there isn't like a common use case kind of that, that could um, uh, be shared here. Um, I wanna talk about when this might not work well. And I think it's one of the big kinks in, in my plan. And it's something I'm interested in learning a lot more about. Um, so I was reading about data leakage. And the funny thing to me reading about data leakage is like, in my world, we call that analytics, right? It's like, take all the data that you have and mush it all together and show the most accurate information you have like now at this point in time. Um, there are cases in analytics where you wanna know like, what did we report as revenue a month ago? You know, sort of excluding new, new information that's come after the fact. But um, I think this is one of the places where, where feature stores and semantic layers kind of diverge. And I am wondering if there's a, a sort of model that we could employ to, to help kind of bridge this gap. Um, so I thought that was interesting. I think that's one of the problems that we'd have to kind of figure out together. But I think that if we can solve this problem and figure out how to unify machine learning with analytics and BI, um, it'll actually help people become a lot more collaborative and help teams work together. And uh, again, just create like more precision and consistency for our reporting or machine learning or whatever it is. Um, so, these are kind of the questions that I have at this point. I regret that I don't actually have answers for you. Um, but sort of at the outset of this, I, I asked the question to myself, like, are semantic layers and, and um, feature stores like the same thing? Or are they going to collide? I think the answer is like, no, not really. There's like different audiences for these two types of tools, uh, different use cases, different constraints, of course. So I don't, I don't think there should be any worry about these two things uh, crashing into each other. But can we learn from each other? Like, yeah, definitely. I think I think we really can. Um, I think that the sort of analytics engineering community has learned a lot about how to be collaborative around creating these shared dimensions and metrics and understanding how to work with the business to make sure that we understand sort of these definitions precisely. Um, and I think the machine learning engineering community has gone really deep on um, like registries and, and sort of defining things once using them in many places and leveraging that engineering background. Um, so in terms of like, where do we start? Like, how do we answer these questions? Um, I'm gonna pop into the apply conference channel on Slack and I'm excited to talk to you about if any of this is resonant or if you think I'm, uh, I'm way off base here. So I just wanna say thanks to everyone for uh, letting me come talk to you today. I'm excited to chat.